Well, it's nice to have you back on the stage again. Oh, thank you very much. Good to uh, have you come, and thank you very much for uh, coming today and to participate with us. It's, uh, it's nice to see the, the, the three special guests that we've had over the three years of the uh, UAE Energy Forum sitting together. It started with uh, Ahmed Ali Al Saig uh, three years ago here on campus, and with Dr. Kamali, we thank you uh, for continuing to host us. Um, I'm going to start by asking you, uh, Your Excellency, there, the CEO of one of the world's biggest energy companies has forecast that by 2020 we are going to reach not an issue of peak supply. We, everybody generally agrees there's lots of oil and gas in the ground, as Diala pointed out at the top of her introduction, uh, three trillion barrels of heavy oil but only 15% uh, of it accessible with current technology. But the, the, the CEO of one of the world's top energy companies has said he expects a peak oil production, not a peak oil supply issue, but actually peak oil production. The challenge, and he put that at 95 million barrels a day, and the challenge of getting above that due to technology, due to talent shortage, due to wars, politics, whatever, the list is long. What do you think of that view? Well, I think it uh, can be impossible. Uh, it can be, because I think we live from our experience in the last many years that technology sometimes, you know, can give you a solution for a lot of uh, difficult, you know, uh, answers. I mean, if you give, for example, you know, when we planned, you know, to build our terminal in Texas, and the Golden Bus, and we invest uh, with our partners there, expecting the time the gas price in USA reach over $17. So it was a very attracting market. And everyone, everyone, I remember that time, everyone is uh, don't running you know, in USA. I remember every time uh, many, many uh, American investors, European investors come to see me, and everyone has, you know, uh, a plan in his right hand to show me that he will build a terminal in USA. One day I, I account how many terminals was planning to build in USA, over 1,000. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> wants to build terminal in every part of the USA. At $17. And seven, every, it was very attracting. So we and our partners, you know, we built a very nice terminal in, in uh, Golden Bass in Texas. I've been there several times I visited our terminal. It's a very beautiful terminal. It's one of the largest terminal in USA. But because the time they believe that the United States is declining in the natural gas and they need to import more natural gas. The time because everyone say, oh, sh shale gas is very expensive to build. It. Shale gas need a high price to keep it, you know, as economic. But Technology was improving very fast in USA, e even faster than we uh, our expectation. I mean, you told me that one of the biggest CO oil companies saying this and this. The time we and ExxonMobil and ConocoPhillips were at that time, who is bigger than ExxonMobil? Who was, uh, you know, uh, also QB. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and also QB, QB there. And ConocoPhillips there. Total there, everyone there. Shell there, and everyone talking about, oh, America will be the next big market to gas. But just in few, three years, the price of, sh uh, of, the nature, of natural gas dropped to below now al al almost $3.50. And suddenly everyone wake up in a nightmare. And every time they say, what happened? Everyone was telling us that uh, this market will be dominated, this market will be uh, the most attractive market in the world. And now, what, what happened? I remember, I still now I received a lot of calls, still I received a lot of you know, visitors from time to time. Even if, even officially I left my job as ener Minister of Energy, but still I am, you know, I cannot leave myself. I'm Your still baby. <laughs> my, oh, I'm still in the energy world, you know, I am part of it. Yeah. 
How big of a threat do you think? Yeah, but let me to, yep. to continue this. You know, I still, you know, this is in call. You know what happened? They are talking to me to export LNG from US. And they want now to convert this terminal, Chanel, the Golden Bus, to export uh, LNG. You know, they built for import LNG. And now the thing is the best way, because you cannot leave uh, this uh, terminal is empty and uh, just uh, is not a part of the tourist. <laughs> Somebody take you to the Texas and say, This is a golden bus. <laughs> see it. Once upon or a time. Chanel, or Chanel, or all this, all now, uh, all the terminal is out of business. Now they have to develop new ideas. And if somebody told you five years ago or six years ago that the American Navy could export LNG, no one would believe it. It's considered, oh, because you see, um, I will advise you something free of charge. <laughs> I will not uh, send my bills to you as any consultancy because consul consultancy business is very attracting because every time I ask for a minister who left energy or chairman or CEOs of any oil companies, what you will do? Consultancy. <laughs> so it's becoming, you know, uh, somebody asked me, me the same question and I said, not, not consultancy. I, I think this is, is not, uh, you know, is a good business. <laughs> but I will give you free, you know, uh, free uh, advice. You know, don't believe forecast. <laughs> but what if they're one of the world's biggest energy companies? Whatever who told you. Take my advice. I spent 30, for almost 40 years in the energy sector. Every time. I received an advice or, or, you know, even a consultancy, you know, or even a report, even from oil companies, national oil, all these forecasters. They will come, yeah, these forecaster, they are very nice people. They will come and they will give you 20 years, 30 years forecaster, but you, they, because they are very smart, because they, they know, they are very sure, you will not find them after. So <laughs> ask them what happened, because every, all of us, we will lift. So the well, new come, the newcomers will come to say, oh, what's the wrong advice? What this guy, you know, you know, did. So I think, you know, take my advice, be careful. Don't build. You know, I mean our experience, you know, because I believe now everyone come to me that time to talk about twenty years planning or fifteen years. I well say, we're talking now about I, years, I say please years. Please leave it in the other table. Let's to talk about next year. <laughs> because, you know, whatever you're trying, you know, to plan, whatever you can, you know, we, you know, I mean, if somebody give me advice at that time, true forecast, but no one has a true forecast. Uh, no one will build this terminal in USA. No one will spend, you know, several billion dollars, you know, to build this terminal and uh, just in two years. Two years only, we wake up, another forecast came, sorry, sir, the terminal. Forecast has changed. Change. And I said, well, what happened? He said, oh, do you know shale gas took on? I said, but shale gas there, many years, why? You know, we, everyone was talking that shale gas has no future. Uh, 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 shale gas is very expensive to develop. Shale gas cannot compete natural gas or LNG or, or so, you know, we thought, but because, and, and research, and, and he will end up with you with the long term, and also he will ask you, do you want another advice? So please, you know, uh, I, I, you know, take my advice. Well, let me ask you to give advice. So don't, if believe, you're a consultant don't to, believe uh, in forecaster. If you're a consultant to your former <laughs> OPEC colleagues a meeting in Vienna, and they all have to decide about adding new capacity. And this is a- Okay, fine. To add the, 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 the leap, you said $100 billion a year. Okay, it's a fine. To add Should they add capacity? Yes, yes. Because also, uh, this is oil. And oil is not renewable resource. It's a depleted resource. You need to add, not in the, after 10 years, it doesn't mean you will add above what exists. You will add even to balance what is today exists. 
So yes, you need to invest. You need to cope with the, with the demand. Now today, what do our forecast? India, China. Everyone talk about India and China. Everyone thought that India, uh, yes, I agree, India and China, uh, they came in the right time. Their growth helped the industrial to, you know, to, uh, to be more uh, in dynamic. You see Europe is decline, USA is a decline. You remember in the peak, USA back in the 90s and the 80s, they consumed 23, 24 million barrels a day. Today, how many they consume? Less 18, 18? If, if we agreed in 18, it means 5 million barrels a day was demolishing from US consumption. But it was substituting to China and India. And even Europe today, we are. God knows what will happen with Europe tomorrow. No one even to predict, even no one to forecast what will happen in the Euro, what will happen in Europe economies. Everyone is more confused. Everyone has no a clear answer. And we have to also very carefully, and I said again, who will give the right answer? No one. With my respect with the politician, politician never give you the right, uh, the right answer. Can I ask you on the point you said in your speech that there's never been an easy oil period. It, do, you, uh, do you see uh, that we are uh, putting that view a little bit aside? Would you recognize that we are entering a new phase in the industry from the perspective of the fact that technology yes. and access to easy, easier production is over and that we're now facing a more challenging period? Yeah, yeah. when you ask what easy oil and non easy oil you know, what what the uh, you know perception what you think how well, look at shaheen in, in qatar that was perceived to be okay al shaheen is a different question al shaheen was discovered back in the early 70s you know by shell and also shell was discovered the north field of gas in, in 72 71 and uh, it was a big disappointment to everyone even to shell even to us it's Gas is not oil. So Shell left it. Said, oh, well, I don't need it. It's a gas, what I should do with it. Even Al Shaheen, when they discovered it, they say it's a very difficult, you know, reservoir. It's non economically to produce it. It's a huge reserve, but it's a very difficult, you know, to, to produce it. It takes us 20 years, you know, and then when other companies came, you know, to compete in Al Shaheen, I remember Amoco and Maersk and others, you know, and Maersk, they give the best condition, the best prospect, you know. The time, even Maersk, they are giving, you know, maximum they can reach 50, 60,000 barrels a day. But thanks to technology, because technology are very advanced, Maersk, I think we should admit it, they had a very, they worked very hard uh, and they improve a lot of technology to see in, uh, to how to maximize even with the very difficult layers. So today, you know, we are, uh, it's one of the biggest fields in, in, the, in, our, uh, in, in Qatar, you know. So it seems to be, I think, you know, then we come. Why I, why I, in my speech, you know, I was to concentrate in technology because all our aspects show that technology will help how to reduce the cost, how will also to solve the difficulty. You know, you, you know when you talk about uh, heavy oil and you said oil, today only is a 15% uh, recovery. I'm sure tomorrow will be 20. And after to it will be 25. We saw even in, in, in enhanced oil recovery, the EY, we saw an old field that already de before declined the death of this field. Now they are in production again. So it's becoming, you know, we have to trust technology. You it's said the most it important to concentrate in technology. And I remember, you know, in technology, when we built the first trade in Qatar gas, was 2 million tons. In a few years, we built 7.3 tons. So you know how they save money, save cost, save. So even in, in, in LNG tanker, the, you remember, they start with 55 or, or 80,000. 
activity. Today, we built the biggest one, 20, uh, 200,000, uh, 260,000 cubic feet. So technology, you know, it helped and it play a very positive uh, role. Sometimes, you know, also I will tell you, you know, don't believe all my speech. <laughs> don't believe the forecaster. Yeah, I mean, sometimes the speech also I have to, you know, put some forecaster, I have to say whether you a, uh, you know, whether uh, energy, uh, you know what OBEC say, but also I will don't advise have to you. Anymore. Also, I will advise you: don't take my speech seriously. <laughs> <laughs> you said in your speech, however, that uh, we need to put uh, confidence to make large-scale investments, and the ingredients for the, the importance of technology that requires the sharing of technology. What what ingredients do you think has to be present in a IOC, NOC relationship uh, in order for confidence to be present and technology to be transferred? Good, good question. Uh, take us back in 75, uh, this is the year, what I told is the, that's NO the, no, that's 86, uh, the uh, yeah. NOC birth. If today, if everyone talk about when NOC birth was back nearly 75, they declared the NOC. Before was the OEC controlled everything. So they were ignored, you know, even uh, to talk with the producer countries. Uh, they, they believe that uh, this is, uh, they will not, uh, you know, let the producer country to develop together with them, you know, and they believe that um, they, they will be the only and alone. So after 75, and uh, we saw the birth of the NOC. We saw QB, we saw Adnos, we saw Aramco, we saw many, many, you know, NOC come to challenge the IOC. And I remember since 75, it was, I call it the unholy war. Start between OEC and OEC. OEC, NOC was mature, was still, they're very young, they are not experienced, they have no technology, no research, IOC, they have everything. They have the research, they have the technology, they have uh, the human resource, they have everything. Capital. Capital. And then they start, you know, the OC to declare a war against NOC. Even it's not, uh, you know, but it's a war. And I remember, you know, many times, you know, they threaten you, they will never give you uh, any uh, tec uh, technical support, they will not, it was, you know, saying, pushing you to show you how you are weak <laughs> and how you should come to us uh, surrendering, you know, not even, you know. And uh, it takes, this war takes us about more than 20 years. 20 years, it was a very, very difficult. You know, even uh, NOC and OEC cannot even talk to each other. It was so, you know, I remember if we met with any OEC, means, oh, be careful. Oh, they are the, the main enemy. They are coming to destroy you. But I think, you know, the, f uh, the best conclusion in after 20 years, everyone knows, even ONC and ONC, no one can eliminate the other. No one can beat them. And this is a very, you know, what the express expression say, if you don't beat me, join me. So finally, start the ONC and ONC, you know, to sit talk, uh, to exchange point of view, uh, to an OEC is change their attitude. And I think they have changed their attitude because they change the old minder, they change the old guards of the OEC. The new generation of the OEC they becoming a more m open. They know they are better than the old guards. The old guards, you know, they learn, you know, all the days how they are, you know, no one can, you know, uh, inter intervention, how they break the NOC, because psychologically they become their mind to eliminate NOC. Uh, but I think the change of the new, and the new era, the newcomers, the new COs, the OEC, you know, uh, they understand that is the best way is not just to go to a long war. In the end of this war, everyone will lose. 
So I think, you know, it, it now, it's a mo now it's tough, you know. I'm very happy, you know, to see now uh, in my era as a minister for the last 20 years, uh, we work very, very good with the OEC. We, have, we establish a very good, you know, relationship, uh, equal. And, uh, you know, a partnership, a real partnership. Not uh, that old, uh, as the old time, you know, uh, the OEC would just give an orders. And uh, they don't want to listen to it. <laughs> and now we work together, and inside and even outside. You know, now we work with many OEC in even in, in many countries outside even our uh, our border now and this is is a very very you know positive this is how to create you know long term and long relationship and the uae have also historically maintained that equation from yeah, the yeah. start the ec an equity partnership yeah i'm saying not uh, you know i just uh, give an example but the start in the uae start in many countries in the world you know it's coming, you know, is a common, but today we are equal. This is the most important, equal partners. I mean, I'm not old, the old days as a, you know, if, uh, if uh, you know, uh, come a teacher to instruct me, you should do this and do this, and the, it's change. Now we become more equal, or you see they built their human resource, they built their own technology, they built uh, their own leaders so they can challenge not as years ago when they, uh, you know, the time I remember, you know, back in the 60s uh, when I grew up, you know, the old oil, uh, oil companies in Qatar, you see there, you know, when even a Qatari applied for a job, it take help to, to, to have them. And even if they have them, they never give him a right <laughs> positions. <laughs> they always send him to, you know, clerks or to uh, not, uh, you know, an important job or engineer and so on. I mean, until uh, even in the 60s, I mean, even in Qatar, if you come, you will not find a one Qatari engineer, oil engineer or gas person, never. The talent shortage now is a big cha challenge all over the world. Yeah. I just want to open it out for the opportunity for the floor, if anybody would like to make a comment or ask His Excellency a question uh, please uh, put up your hand and, and, and a microphone will will get to you. Uh, so as we scan the floor, we, ha we have microphones. Coming back to the issue of talent, uh, in, in, in the challenge for the industry going forward, you have technology and the importance of it. How important is the development of talent and how big of a crisis do you think there is in, in uh, emerging in the shortage of talent, both NOC or oh, I think, you know, talent is a very important, you know, and I think uh, today, even if we talk about uh, technology, research, and human resource, I think, you know, when we went back in 85, you know, the first crisis of oil industry, and the oil price was suddenly everyone uh, wake up below $10 and the oil companies, even ONC or IEC, they face a lot of difficult, uh, they almost bankruptcy. So what they did, they cut job, uh, they fired thousands of uh, good engineers, uh, they cut their expenses. But what the result? The result from 85 until 2000, when the, the industry come back again in 2001, suddenly the industry wake up it was a big shortage of talent. It was a big shortage of engineers. Because in from 85, many young top-notch students from graduate from high school, they stopped not to go to engineer uh, department because they were, oh, there's no future. What is the future? Oh, go to IT, is the flourishing. Go to finance, all the banks, they need you. So you remember the early 90s. Oh, everyone was talking about IT. Everyone talking, if you want to make, uh, you know, if you want to make a lot of money, go to San Francisco, go to uh, Silicon Valley, uh, create any IT company, internet, and sell it again or resell it. You make millions of dollars, and it was a fashion. And uh, so, w until today, I remember, you know, and still, you know, all oil companies, 
facing a big shortage of talent. You see in Canada, the, uh, where, the, where America next door, there's 10% unemployment, and yet in Canada, where uh, there's no college degree required, uh, pay very well, they can't recruit uh, drillers. Yeah. Uh, they're trying desperately to expand capacity, and they expect next year right. to only be able to expand capacity 1%. This is the Association of Oil Well Drilling Contractors in Canada. They forecast the ability only to increase capacity by 1% because of the not shortage even, of drillers. Not even drillers. I remember a few years ago, and until today, welders. Even we cannot find a good welding, welder just to come to, you know, to work in the, with the pipelines. It's a big shortage. And some, you know, uh, big major projects in the energy uh, sector, you know, being delayed, uh, y you know, even sometimes two, three years because they are shortage of manpower. Because the manpower today is a very difficult to find it because now if you want to build again, it takes years. Well, the same thing happened in 2008. A lot of layoffs after the yes, price collapse. Yes, yes. Again. 